Welcome back to Grid Gym. Jim, this is Tori, and I'm Adam. Today we're talking about proteins and you know what kind. Like, uh, like are we talking animal? Are we talking plant? Are we talking supplements? Uh, when we get into supplements, you know, we're talking about like whey protein, casein, uh, rye protein, rice protein, pea protein, cranberry protein, hemp protein, slaw proteins. Anyway, uh, we're gonna stay away uh, uh, from the vegan versus keto thing. We'll get into it probably just a little bit because you know it's bound to come up. Uh, but protein is one of your three macronutrients. It is an essential macronutrient. You cannot live without it. Uh, you can live without carbs. You can't live without fat or protein. And uh, so, and a macronutrient is where you get your calories, right? Right. So, we're gonna get into proteins. What uh, what do we need to know? Well, what is a protein? Like, That's what does point. that That's mean? Good point. That's a good point. Well, protein is an amino acid, so amino acid is the building blocks of proteins. And what proteins do is they help with you at the cellular function. So if you don't have them, then certain reactions don't happen, and then and then also you don't make those gains. <laughs> Dim gains. Dim gains. Um, so from a metabolic processing standpoint, it is significant, uh, not just necessarily to give your body calories, but actually to make sure that everything functions the way that it can so that you can maintain homeostasis and blow right. up your biceps. Right. Yeah. 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 They're important. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. them. <laughs> we can't live without them. All right. Where do we find protein? Well, where do we find amino acids? Maybe we should say it that way first. Amino acids, well, they're in animal sources and plant sources. They're okay. in a lot of things. What would be the big, um, the big difference between plant sources and, uh, and animal sources as far as amino acids go? I think just the way that our body like, takes them in and the quality of them. True. Um, animal, from my understanding what I've learned, animal is just going to be a little bit better than plant. Yeah, well, and it's a complete amino. Like an animal, is, it's always a complete essential amino acid chain, whereas a plant, you're gonna to have to eat multiple different plants to complete the acid chain. So um, corn, for instance, doesn't have a complete amino acid chain uh, for your muscle. You're gonna to have to supplement, or you're gonna to have to have other vegetables in there what to get the full spectrum. What do you mean by amino acid chain? For those who don't know. Oh, complete amino acid chain? Yeah, what does that mean? Well, there are essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. So uh, thanks for turning the tide and making all the questions for me. You're so welcome. there are things that your body can already produce, right? Um, it, and then there are things that your body can't produce. Um, your body can't produce its own protein, it can't produce its own fat, and it can't produce um, certain amino acids, just like it can't produce uh, certain um, vitamins and minerals. So uh, the ones that it can produce are called non-essential. Um, still important to get in your diet, um, but not <laughs> nearly as important as the essential ones that your body can't make. So, uh, so um, the essential amino acids you need to survive. So uh, yeah. if you want to make it easy, you grab some animal protein and call it good. Right. <laughs> Long answer short, eat animal protein. The end. Yeah. Goodbye. So, <laughs> um, so as far as like, let's dig into animal protein just a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got chicken, beef, pork, fish, other types of seafood, I guess. Anything, are there any others in there? Eggs. Eggs, true, true, eggs. true. Delicious I'd put that in the chicken eggs. category. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so, um, so are eggs safe? Should we only be eating egg whites? I know we're kind of uh, bridging the gap here to the next video that's gonna be the fat video, but. I see, eat the whole egg. <laughs> Eat, Eat the whole, whole egg. egg. Um, okay, so let's stick to the chicken category. Okay. Why might we choose chickens? Like, um, like is, is that is that the top level source of animal protein that we can find? It de depends. Um, so chicken it has some micronutrients in it and it is pretty lean. Um, but then you also have beef too, which is going to be a little bit fattier, but not that much. Um, and then you also have other micronutrients and the iron, which a True. lot of females are going to need. Okay, and we and talked males. about micronutrients in the leafy green video. Right. Um, so, how? So when we eat proteins, uh, protein sources like animal, are we mm -hmm. um, are we getting zero micronutrients in those foods, or are we still getting a great deal of micronutrients from chicken, beef, pork? We're getting both. Sweet. Bang for your buck, man. <laughs> okay. 
So you're still getting, uh, like, if you, basically what we're uh, questioning there is, if, uh, if you eat beef, you're still getting a great number of micronutrients in, uh, along with that macronutrient. It's not so cut and dry that, like, oh, no this macronutrients is, in this, or no micronutrients in this. This only, is only protein. It's <laughs> only protein. It's pure protein. Um, okay, so uh, what about the line, uh, the less feet, the better? You never heard that one? Yeah, the less feet, the better. Uh, when it comes to animal protein, is a line that got used uh, back like late '90s. Uh, it was basically saying uh, a fish would be your top level of protein, and then a chicken would be your next source, and then a and then a cow would be your next source. It was uh, it was kind of in um, like an anti uh, cholesterol sort of uh, scenario, but uh... yeah. So there obviously is like a certain amount of benefit to that, you know, like. Are you going to say that fish are bad or that chicken is bad? Um, but yeah. it's kind of leading towards, uh, is beef bad? Um, can we talk about beef a little bit? Sure. Beef it up. Oh, beef that was ham. bad. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. Uh -huh. Well. All right. So beef have four feet, four hooves, whatever. Right. Four legs. Four legs. Um, well. What's going on here? It just <laughs> depends on where you get your beef. So are you getting it with, what is it, like 15% fat, um, not... Grain-fed, grain fed, uh, yeah. stressed out animal. Um, the, the, like I'm not like saying that, uh, that cattle fed tons of medications are necessarily bad, um, but there probably is a certain amount of... Uh, getting back to nature is typically good for us. So, um, well, so grass fed beef is usually going to be your better alternative. I think whatever they eat, you're going to eat too. So right. if they're plumped full of steroids and medications mm -hmm. and stuff like that, like that's just going to transfer into you too. Yeah. So if you don't want to take a bunch of steroids, then <laughs> why eat? Do yeah. That? And, and I think this is where the vegan sort of scenario comes up is, uh, the, the Ron Swanson, you know, do I eat the food that my food eats? No, I do not, you know, um, joke. But that is a certain, there is a certain amount of accuracy to that. Uh, a cow has more stomachs than you do and a much longer digestive tract where they can break down grass and then turn it into muscle. We cannot do that. So in order to get the nutrients from the grass, we have to eat the cow. Right. It's like they're the middleman. <laughs> yep. 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 A delicious yep. middleman. Okay, so some differences between uh, conventional Sierra, uh, conventional farm raised uh, cattle versus grass fed cattle. What are some things that we're gonna some pros and cons to each one? Um. Well, first one would be price. Um. The one. True. That's a bit of a con. Uh, yeah. Grass fed beef is typically a little bit more expensive. A little bit. You're more. probably going to pay one and a quarter to one and a half times as much. It's a bummer. Yeah, bummer. Um, and then for grass fed, like we said, you're going to have like the less steroids and less antibiotics and stuff like that. Which is probably a plus, likely. Probably, yeah. Um, CLA is going to be much higher. So uh, I know I'm bridging into the fat, to, the fat talk that we're going to have next, but conjugated linoleic acid is pretty good for you. Yeah. Um, I think, though, it's your best judgment whatever you feel like if you can't spend that much on beef then yeah the other one will be just fine yeah i think it's a little bit like organic uh produce um yeah there's certain times where it's like obvious like yes it's probably a good idea and other times where it's kind of a wash and it just probably does not matter all that much and it really comes down to your uh you you're a grown individual you can make your own choices so Right. Um, but there are definite benefits to eating grass-fed uh, beef. Uh, yep. But okay, what about pork? Should we just be eating bacon all the time? Go back to Atkins, where we're just oh. you know pound of bacon every day. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Go for it. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> uh, pork, like yeah, it's good for you. Um, it, like it's gonna have different micronutrients than the cow or the beef will. Um, um, Nowadays, like it, you can still get it pretty lean, um, but I definitely still wouldn't eat a pound of bacon every day. <laughs> it is pretty wild. Like, like when I was a kid, you could do, let's say, four pieces of bacon and a bottom of a skillet would fill that skillet. Oh, wow. With fat. 
And today, like you put a piece, like four pieces, and it's just like dry. It's amazing. I, I can't like. <laughs> It's almost silly that I'm saying this, but it's amazing how lean bacon is today versus how lean, it how fatty used it used to be. Yeah, and uh, pork with the, like pork used to be grown outside, uh, you know, like cattle are, and, but they just would get so fatty that it would cost more anyway. So now they have them inside of buildings where they can control the temperature and they, so the pig stays a lot leaner, uh, a lot more lean, whatever. Um, and so it's just, it's much more lean today. It's almost as lean yeah. as chicken sometimes. Yeah, it's delicious. Um, and again, it's preference. If you don't like pork, then you don't have to eat pork. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. I mean, we're in Iowa, so like pork chops are kind of a thing, but. Pork chops are delicious. I had them <laughs> last night, actually. I was like, hmm. All right, and then uh, seafood would be the last one, you know, fish and seafood. Uh, the nice thing about that is it's extremely lean uh, for the most part. And uh, typically the, 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 fats that you get from fish are kind of good fats. So uh, yeah. it's kind of your, it's kind of a safe bet. Anything yeah. else you would say about it? Uh, just make sure that you pay attention. Well, with everything, just pay attention from the source where you're getting Oh it. yeah, totally. So what yeah. would be a good source versus a bad source? Or what would be a, uh, an ideal source? I'll say it that way. I'll try to take good and bad out of it. Well, an ideal source would be like right out of the ocean. That's the only thing I have like <laughs> all their stuff. Just go out, get a fishing rod, come back in. Or I guess you can do it from the lake too, but I don't know. We're in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just. But wild caught would be a good idea, even though yeah. that's probably nonsense. It's probably some, it's like, it's like cage free or something like that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, or just like, um, I know the last, a couple of times that I bought fish, like it was, uh, this goes for anything, it was already expired and I was just like, oh man. Did you eat it anyway? No, I did not. Oh really? Um, my take on old food is always like, like if you've ever had food poisoning, how much would you pay, have paid to not have food poisoning? And, a lot. and I always ask myself that question whenever I have anything like uh, like questionable in the fridge. And I'm like, I would pay a lot more than what I paid for this. So I throw it away. Yeah, that was yeah exactly that's probably that. a good rule of thumb yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But okay, well, what about plant protein? Plant based protein, uh, where are some places that we're finding it? Um, well. Is that going to be tough? I was <laughs> Sounds like that's a qu hard question. Um, well, there are some in nuts. Um, True. And there are some in beans, even though they say that they're more of a carb source, but there are, they are in there. Before the video, I told her that um, we were listing these out and I said, uh, nuts is a fat source, not a protein source. It just hap it's a fat source that happens to have protein, not a protein source that happens to have fat. And that beans are a carb source that happen to have protein, not a protein source that happens to have carbs. Uh, there's just not very many, uh, it's just pretty low in the category. So, uh, but yes, there are protein in those things. Uh, what about quinoa? Quinoa, yeah. It's got like quinoa. It's Q-U-I-N-O-A. It looks like quinoa. It's quinoa. Quinoa. What is this quinoa? <laughs> quinoa. Uh, and spin spinach is another one. It's because the spirulina in it, right? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't think like, oh, spinach. I'm getting my veggies. No. You get yeah. some protein in there too. Yeah, but for the most part, almost everything has some level of protein. I mean, even bread has a little bit of protein in it. I mean, the yeah. gluten is protein, technically. Um, so. Yeah, it just depends, like, what the quality is. So, like, quality is, like, um, how your body best absorbs it mm -hmm. and then how your body is able to use it. <clears throat> so the higher qualities, your body is going to get more of the protein be able to use it better versus, like, the lower quality, like, where your body has to actually work just a little bit harder to extract that protein and yeah. to put it to use. Yeah, yeah. So anybody who's on a raw food diet or a vegan diet, uh, the chances of them uh, being extremely malnutritioned uh, is almost 100%. Uh, it's, just, it's so difficult to extract the, the necessary nutrients from the food, macro and micro, uh, on a raw food or a vegan diet that it's all, it's like you're, you, you're almost essentially uh, guaranteeing to be malnutrition on some level, no yeah. matter how good you do at it. So, yeah, yeah, it's a tough go. It's a really tough go. Um, so anyway, um, what was I going to ask? I was going to ask something right before that, and then it just totally probably going to be a really good question too. 
metabolic processing. What's the quickest and what's the slowest? So th this question is like, how fast does our body digest certain proteins or how slow does it digest other proteins? And why would this be significant? Well, <laughs> it just depends on what you're trying to do. So the slowest would be eggs. Um, it takes about, what, 12 to 16 hours. It's yeah, a pretty I'm long time. Pretty sure it's something like that. Around it's a long there. time. Around there. Eh, don't quote me. Um, and then the fastest would be uh, like your supplements. So like your protein powders or your BCAs, stuff like that. Yeah. So and specifically whey. Whey is going to get into you the fastest, like by far. Casein is a little slower and then all your vegan proteins are going to be much slower. So. Right. So it, that is where timing comes into play. So if you just got done with a really hard workout, uh, you don't want a slow fasting or slow, a slow, slow fasting. yeah yeah i i said it and i was like oh no slow digesting protein because then there is a window like right after you get done working out then your muscles and everything they need that protein they need those carbohydrates to recover and to yeah. do their thing um so if you have a slow digesting one then you're going to miss that window so if you get like a protein shake or a BCA or some or a bar, or a bar. Or, uh, BCA is branched chain amino acid. Right. Uh, so valine, isovaline, uh, or leucine, isoleucine, and valine. I almost did that backwards. Uh, so they're the muscles found in your, or the, the amino acids that are found in your muscles. So you're, you're pushing those in, but uh, right after a workout, you basically, you have like a, a one hour window. Uh, that's not the exact same for every single person. It's not like at 59 point, you know, at 59 seconds. It just shuts down. At 59 minutes, Too late. we're open. At 61, uh, we're done. Um, but you, your 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 muscles are open, uh, and, and they're 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 accepting. They you know, uh, they're like get in me to recover. Uh, so you want to feed them that. Um, That's a lot of hand gestures. I don't know what to do with my hands. And one of them got kind of close. I felt the wind. I was like, whoa. Whoa. Uh, but yeah, um, so it just depends on what you're doing. So if you're working out after that, you want a faster digesting one versus in the morning, um, probably a good idea just to have protein slowly throughout the day. So you're yeah. using your muscles throughout the day, so you get stretched out. Yeah, you get kind of a drip, right? Yeah. Um, protein is also your most stable macronutrient. Um, like if you think of carbs more like gasoline and protein, like, a, like coal, like it's like a slow burner. Uh, and uh, just because you're eating protein doesn't mean that it's necessarily just shoving it right into your muscle. Your body is going to burn the protein that ends up going into your blood and through the metabolic processes. So it's, it's using it all. Um, so if you're trying to lose fat, you want to eat protein to keep the muscle. And if you're trying to gain muscle, you want to eat the protein to gain the muscle. Right. <laughs> what he said. All right, but, uh, but the quickest and the slowest matters. I mean, it matters from a workout standpoint. It matters from a breakfast standpoint. Um, and you, you got to think, like, what's going to stay in your system the longest? I mean, if you're trying to go run a marathon and you're going to eat a ton of protein 15 minutes before the race, well, that's going to stick in you. You're going to eat a bunch of eggs right before a competition. See yeah, what I mean? not like, the best idea there. It, uh, versus you're going to go sit in a desk all day and you want to eat a uh, cake. Yeah, you're gonna be hungry in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Or you're gonna go like, get another piece of cake. Yeah, I mean, you go eat the Americanized version of Chinese food, uh, it's all starch, <laughs> you know? It's just, but it is delicious. Yeah, I will, I will admit, I will admit, I will yeah. admit. Okay, so we got a little bit about protein there. Uh, what to eat around your workouts, what to eat for breakfast, uh, what's the quickest, what's the slowest, how it affects your metabolism. Um, one thing I didn't, I, I don't think, we didn't talk about satiation, um, uh. just feeling full. Um, yeah. which is another benefit of protein. You're probably gonna feel just full, more full faster than you would from uh, most carbohydrates and from fats. Um, but uh, for the most part, you're gonna find it more readily available on animals versus plants. Um, not to say that you can't get it from plants, it's just gonna be extremely difficult. And even then, it's almost guaranteed that you're not gonna get it all. So right. um, anything else before we sign off and I'd... go to the next one? I think that's good. Um, you really covered a lot there, actually. I know. I was trying to think of summarizing. Uh, so animal protein, go for it. Um, <laughs> it's good for you. Beef is going to be good for you. 
Um, I would probably rank that one a little bit higher than the other ones just because of the other micronutrients that you are going to get with it. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about that a ton. Like, uh, the beef, that, like, the benefits of beef are astounding. Um, yeah. And it's really too bad because beef got a really bad reputation back in the late 80s and early 90s from the cholesterol debate. Uh, but almost, like, your body is set up to eat beef. I mean, like, our genetics are almost dependent on eating beef. I mean, we parallel... Anyway, uh, you're almost essentially never going, like no human almost is going to be, you'd be an extreme anomaly to be allergic to beef. Uh, it's just, That'd be a bummer, man. How that would suck. But yeah. anyway, but yeah. point being, beef, good. Beef, good. Yeah, eat it. Um, and then eggs are going to be really good for you as well. Um, even in the egg yolk, you have choline, which is going to help with your mental focus. Mm -hmm. So that's neat. And you can't really find it very many other places. I mean, for the most part, uh, yeah. egg yolks are your most significant and readily available source of choline. Right, so both good for you. Um, and then new protein timing, so faster digesting after your workout, slower in the morning. Um, and then protein sources, uh, whey is gonna be a little bit better if you're doing the supplement rather than plant-based. Yeah. And all of these are subject to, ch to change based on the individual. There are yep. certain things that, um, uh, uh, like, there's a ton of individualization here. We're planning with very broad strokes. Uh, right. However, most of this will help 95% of people. So, um, yeah. experiment on yourself and questions. ask us lots of questions. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, Adios. on to the next one. Thanks, Adios. guys.